Welcome to the Night Club, guys. It's your host, the Night Wrencher. Now, today we're actually going to be getting a baseline on this carburetor. The goal of this is to actually figure out where we're starting from before we actually start making modifications. Since I've already built several carburetors for my carbureted LS, I've already know where more or less I have to be in order to get the, the truck running. And then from there, I do minor adjustments and then I'll be fine. But what I'm actually trying to do is I'm trying to let you guys know that even though we're going to be mismatching all these different parts, if you get the tune right and if you know how the carburetor works, you can actually get this thing to run perfectly no matter what engine you get it on as long as you do the proper tuning. And in order to figure out where you want to be, you got to figure out where you're at first. So what we're actually going to do right now, we're going to take off the fuel bowls, we're going to take the metering blocks off, we're going to take measurements off of the orifices in the metering blocks, uh, make notes of what jets we're going to use and what power valves we're going to be using as well, just so we can figure out where we're going. To accomplish this, uh, we're going to be using something that I seem to use very often on my channel, and that is a pin gauge set. And what it does, it essentially has a bunch of metered uh, rods that are pre-calibrated to specific orifices. From there, I can actually take my metering block and measure each orifice one by one, and then I'm going to be writing it down on a piece of paper. From there, I'm going to be making the proper adjustments to be more or less where I want to be and then write those on the piece of paper as well. And then when I start doing modifications later on and we start reading the AFR gauge and figuring out where exactly the carburetor is running, we're gonna make adjustments to that as well. So like I said, we're gonna go ahead and pull off one of the bowls first and get a reading off the primary side. Normally these carburetors take a 5 16 or an eight millimeter socket to actually pull this stuff off, but the Demon uses Allen head bolts, which isn't a big deal. I'm not using an Allen head screwdriver because I found a flathead that'll work fine. And I don't really feel like looking for the quarter inch uh, Allen key to pull these bolts off. So I'm just going to deal with what I have. And I have extras of these in case I gall them, but they're actually pretty strong. So I don't think we're gonna have any issues. So I went ahead and pulled the fuel bowl off the primary side. If you guys saw my last video, you guys will know that I didn't put any power valves or any jets inside this power valve. I kind of just threw this stuff together just to make sure everything uh, fit. So like I said, this is the primary side medium block. You can tell because it has the port for the ported vacuum. It has a power valve, power valve restrictor channels. So I'm gonna go ahead and pull out my piece of paper and I'm gonna start making some notes. And so we're gonna go jets. We're gonna go IFRs, which are um, idle feed restrictors. We're gonna go PVCRs, which are power valve restrictor channels. We're going to be going uh, power valve size. We're also going to be doing accelerator pump and then accelerator pump nozzle as well. I'm also gonna be making some notes on the emulsion circuit, although I'm not planning to do any kind of tuning on that right now. So as for jets, I know that my engine runs nicely around 70, so 70 jets in the primary side. IFRs, I don't know because this is a different uh, carburetor than I've been using. So on this particular carburetor, I had already previously drilled it out to accept adjustable idle feed restrictors, but the stock ones are still here in the middle. So I'm gonna go ahead and take my pin gauge set. We're gonna start small because they're probably large. So we're gonna start at the 28. Uh, this is uh, 0.028. So we're gonna go ahead and try to find the fitting for the power valve restrictor channel or the idle feed restrictors. So we're starting off here and 28 is in fact too small by a lot. So we're gonna go 30, 30 is too small, 32. Yeah, so we're at 0 0.0. Three, two. It just, it's kind of like doing a little feeler gauge. You just feel that it has a little bit of resistance as you're going in and you go ahead and go up or down based on what you're feeling. So we are at 0 0.032. Power valve restrictor channels, those are actually the ones that feed the main circuit. Uh, they look really small, so we're gonna start at 22 thousandths and see where we're at from there. So 22 thousandths is actually too small. We're gonna go ahead and jump up to 26 thousandths, so 0 0.026, and it's still a big step. We're gonna go 36 thousandths, and in fact, it is still loose. So either 
I drilled these out or somebody drilled them out or that's really how big they came. Uh, let's go ahead and try 40 thousandths. And 40 thousandths is right where we're at. We're gonna, just for good measure, we're gonna go ahead and go 41 thousandths to see if, oh, it actually does, it fits better. 41 thousandths does fit better. Does it fit better on both sides? Let's find out. And it's a little tight on the other side, but it's still doable. So we are going to be doing 41 thousandths on the power valve restrictor channels. This is actually a little bigger than what I like to run. I have a video on every single circuit, but as a refresher, the larger the power valve restrictor channels are, the more fuel you're gonna get when the power valve itself opens. So if you have a, let's say a 6.5 power valve, you're accelerating, vacuum drops below 6.5, you're gonna get 41 thousandths worth of fuel added to your main circuit. And if you have too much or your orifice on the PVCRs are too big, you're going to be running really, really rich. The whole point of the PVCR is to supplement the main circuit for when you're into that in between, between accelerating just out of the main circuit and right before that secondary. So let, let's say you're trying to get up and pass a car, you're trying to go on the on-ramp, you're trying to you know, do some hot rod stuff. All of that plays a role on how your power valve restrictor channels should be tuned. 041, as far as I know, is too big. But as for right now, we're just gonna leave it alone because I can easily go up in size. It's gonna be really hard to go down in size. So the next one is the power valve. So I don't have any of the power valves that I normally use, which would be a 10.5, but I do have a bunch of the stock 6.5s that come in the rebuilt kit. So that's what we're gonna run. We're gonna run a 6.5. Uh, we have the accelerator pump cam. So my truck really likes a 50cc accelerator pump. I don't have a 50cc accelerator pump right now. I need to go out and buy one. They're actually kind of expensive. So while I save up the money to go buy a front one and I don't know exactly what I'm gonna run on the secondary side, I'm just gonna run a standard 30cc accelerator pump. With this. I'm probably just gonna run a pink cam. So for the, for the accelerator pump cam, we're just gonna run the standard pink cam. And for the accelerator pump nozzle, I know for a fact that my engine likes to run uh, 040 or 40 thousandths um, or size 40 squirter is my truck's preferred size. And in fact, a little bit more wouldn't hurt either. So I'm if these are not already set up to be 40, I'm either going to drill out a set and make them 40. Uh, the ones that are on the carburetor right now, they are actually, and I believe I checked them, they are both 32s. So right now they are at 32, which is not terrible. Uh, it's a little bit higher than you typically get in the you know off the shelf carburetors, but uh, they're too small because my truck is too heavy. Uh, the heads flow really, really, really well. I have a lot of vacuum. Uh, I go through that fuel super quick, especially when I'm rock crawling or doing things like that. I really need that extra amount of fuel to keep my engine from stalling, especially when I'm just um, bouncing off the clutch and tapping the accelerator, I need to make sure that I get that extra amount of fuel in there. And as for the emulsion circuit, we have a two hole circuit right here. Uh, the holes look really big, but it's kind of a similar situation like with the um, idle feed restrictors. The, it's got a smaller orifice inside of the big orifice. So what I'm gonna do is, uh, same thing, let's go ahead and start with uh, O21. So O21 is too small. Let's go O24, a little bit better. Let's go O26. So I can get O26 on the bottom ones, but I can't seem to get O26 on the top ones. All right, so the verdict is these are at O25, all four. If we go ahead and check the high speed and low speed air bleeds, I know these are adjustable uh, and they should have just a standard size that most carburetors use. So let's do, let's see, 60. Yes, yeah, so we're at 60 thousandths on the low speed. Let's check the high speed ones. High speed ones are pretty small. So they're bigger than 35. Let's go up to 40. 40 seems to work pretty well. That's it, that's the one we're gonna use. So we're gonna use 42. So I'm gonna add two categories, low speed air bleeds and high speed air bleeds. The ones on the outside are the low speed, which were at 60, and the high speed air bleeds 
we're at 42. It's actually 060 and 042. So to save you guys some time, I'm gonna go ahead and do the secondary side, and we're gonna do this all over again. A lot of the readings I was able to just copy from when I did the primary side, and that was because some of the things that I measured on the primary side, I knew were gonna be the same on the secondary side, especially things I'm going to be adding. Uh, some things to note that were the same were obviously the accelerator pump nozzle, the accelerator pump cam, the jets that I was going to use, and the high speed and low speed air bleeds were the same as the front because I checked those already. What did end up surprising me the most is that the power valve restrictor channels, whereas the primary sides were at 41, the secondary sides were actually at 60. The IFRs were the primary side was at 32. The secondaries were already at 36. One last thing I noticed is that the emulsion circuits were drilled out to 27 and the primary sides were set up to 25. So the carburetor, the secondary side metering block came out of was an 800 double pumper. And that would explain why it's got orifices that are so big. If I was to just go ahead and install it as is, as how it is set up right now, it's just going to be dumping fuel as soon as I enter the secondaries. So I'm going to have to make the adjustments before I actually run this on the truck because I already know what's going to happen judging by these baseline readings. And that's essentially the whole point of doing a baseline reading is you want to eliminate problems or at least deter problems before they actually become problems. And if you can identify a carburetor problem before it's actually on the engine and running, you're going to be a lot happier and you might even save yourself from committing a huge problem down the road. Maybe a hydrolock situation, maybe a spark plug fouling, maybe killing a couple of two sensors. You don't know what can happen. And if you put in a known good tune in your carburetor before you install it on your motor, you're going to have... The rest of the tuning process should be super straightforward. So the next video on this carburetor that will come out is me dialing back all of these settings to where they're supposed to be so I can finally install this on my truck and get it going. So that's all for today. I'll see you guys all in the next one. Night Wrencher out.